Hi everyone, it's Ranger Beck here again and I've got Ranger Tim with me today and we're out at Simpsons Gap and as you've probably noticed it's getting quite dark out here um, this evening and we've come out at this time of day for a particular reason and that is because we want to look for some frogs. So we've come out tonight, we're all prepared to look for some frogs. So what have we got with us today, Tim, to make well, sure we're ready? We've got a nice head torch because we want to be able to see what we're doing. But with a head torch, believe it or not, there's still lots of insects that fly out at night. So something to be mindful. So something maybe to pack is also some insect repellent as you head down. What else can you think of, Beck? Definitely. Um, I think a really important other thing is closed shoes, Tim, because, um, you know, we're walking over rocky, uneven ground in the dark. And we also might come across not just frogs, but also some creatures that like to eat frogs. Any ideas, Tim? Uh, I can tell you that it doesn't have any legs. That's it. So we might see some snakes if we're really lucky tonight. And so having closed shoes on is a great idea to protect your feet. You don't want to accidentally step on one because that could be a pretty scary situation. Anyway, before it gets too dark, we want to head down to the gap and see if we can find some frogs tonight. So you ready, Tim? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, we'll see you soon. So off we went, and it wasn't long before the sun set and darkness set in as we got our head torches on and began to search for frogs. There was certainly no shortage of life after dark, and we were quickly joined by thousands of companions along the way. Tim's little friends for the night. Complimentary massage from Simpsons Gap. Alright, looks like Beck's found something. We've just found our first waterhole. What, what can you see, Beck? Yeah, well, I've got a couple of little desert tree, fro desert tree frogs here. Uh -huh. So there's one just on the side of this log down here and there's also a couple hiding out on top of that rock. I can actually see four of them. They're all quite cute Sitting and around. small. There's a lot of, yeah, as you can see, Tim, a lot of tadpoles in the water, some of them getting quite big. Oh yeah. Getting ready yeah. to change over from a few swimming in there. that part of their life and into their frog life. So if you just have a look in here, Tim, you can see. Oh wow, there they are, look. Three of them. I can see, actually, there's, one there's a few on the tucked right, underneath yeah. and there's yeah. a few just on the side of the rock too. Oh wow, yep. So there's quite a little collection there. They're the desert tree frogs, so they're the ones, oh there's one right near your neck too. Oh yep, here he is, look at that. So sometimes we call them toilet frogs because often they like to live in people's toilets. <laughs> or the um, the sinks up at the toilet block here at Simpsons, so you see them around. But they are one of my favourite little frogs. And there is actually a great app to use for frogs called the Frog ID app. So none of our frogs are calling tonight, but if you want to hear what they do sound like, that app is a really good um, way of listening. People have recorded calls and save them on the app and you can listen to them. Mm. Fantastic. Well we've got one frog on the board. Let's see how we go for the rest of the night. Yep. I just found something with a few more legs than a frog. Sorry to all the viewers that may not like these things. Look away now. I'm afraid I don't know what species it is, but he's a beauty. So it looks like we've found our snake for the night. We were actually expecting to see a couple of pythons, but this is a nice little surprise. This is a curl snake. Um, some people know it as Suta Suta, which is its scientific name. And you can tell he's a, a curl snake because of the dark brown patch on his head. And they're quite common, they, they inhabit most of Australia um, in the arid zone and they feed on a variety of different items, uh, mostly reptiles, but they can occasionally consume some small mammals. 
and also frogs to top things up. So potentially he's on the hunt for some frogs tonight. These guys will typically grow to around 40 centimetres, although they can get to up to 60 centimetres, so I reckon this one's right on par. Now they are a venomous snake, so you do need to exercise a bit of caution if you see one. Um, but if you've ever encountered a snake, or if you do happen to see one, the most important thing is not to panic. The best thing you can do is back away at a safe distance, because all the snake wants to do is move away. And the reason that this snake gets the name Curl Snake is because when they are threatened, they're known to curl up and unwind when they're threatened and slash about. So he's not doing that at the moment, and that's because we're giving him plenty of space. So we'll let him carry on his way and enjoy the rest of his night. Well, Bex just told me she's found our third frog for the night. What's that one there, Beck? What have we got here? Yeah, this is a really cool little frog, and these ones are tiny, like they've just um, become frogs, I would say. So these are Spencer's burrowing frogs, and there's a few of them. And Spencer's burrowing frogs have the most amazing adaptation to cope with living in the desert. So when there's not enough water left for them to live um, in and around them, they can burrow themselves into the sand. They can go down half a metre and they shed a few layers of skin and it actually helps to keep the moisture in their body. They slow their body right down, go into a state of torpor and they can live there for months on end until the rain comes and then they come to the surface again. Wow. We've just found another pool here. And not many frogs, but I think Beck might have found something in this one. What do you got here, Beck? Yeah. We've got a really amazing creature called a water scorpion. And there's actually a few of them mm. in this little pond here. A scorpion. Now, is that something that's dangerous? Look, they do look like they could be a little bit dangerous, but they're not. They're, they don't have that stinger like the land scorpions do. So they're not going to sting you, but they have a really interesting feature in that what looks like their tail, they actually stick it up in the air like a snorkel and use it to breathe. Mm. And uh, are they found in lots of spaces around Central Australia, Beck, or do you tend to find them in these little pockets? Yeah, I've seen them quite reliably down here at Simpsons Gap in the water and probably a few other places, but yeah, I'd say they're probably quite common to mm. see. Nice find. What have you found, Beck? Something yeah, else? Yeah, this is the um, most reliable spot to find one of the most spectacular frogs in Central Australia. And this is our beautiful Centralian tree frog. You can see I can actually spy four of them at the moment. There's also a, a few desert tree frogs hanging about around here too, but we're right down near the waterhole. And this is the place where I find them most often. So you can see there's a little fella up to your left up there. Gee, they're so green, aren't they? Yeah, really bright. They are quite variable, but the ones we're seeing tonight are just spectacularly green. And so they like this habitat, do they, Beck? Yeah, this is where I tend to see them most often on this rocky areas, which is sort of funny being called a tree frog. I don't ever remember seeing them in trees. So yeah, on the rocky little crevices like this is the best place to spot them. Also spotted one more animal here, some sort of water bird. This fella has been living at Simpsons Gap for as long as I know. I used to work here, uh, that was two years ago. And he's just by himself, but he's pretty happy here. Probably picking off little insects, which are flying around at the moment. And perhaps if he's really lucky, he might be able to get one of those fish that are found near the Spangled Grunter. So if you look up here, Tim, you can see a beautiful gecko. 
It's quite a large one. You've probably noticed it's about 20 centimetres long. And it's a marbled velvet gecko. Gorgeous colouring that you can see on it there. It's got those beautiful big eyes. Great for night vision, looking for its prey at night time. Probably going to find some of those bugs that we've seen tonight. Plenty of them here tonight. So it should get a good feed. So one of the frogs that we didn't see on our frog night tonight, Tim, is the mains frog, sometimes called the sheep frog. And that's because their call sounds a lot like sheep. And it's a really unusual sound if you hear it out in the, in the evening and you hear that sound of sheep barring but it's actually this mains frog and the easiest way to identify the mains frog is by the long white stripe that goes all the way from its nose down its back and that's a very distinguishing feature of those mains frogs. So Tim sometimes when we're, we come out looking for frogs and we mentioned it before that we often see things that like to eat frogs but we haven't actually spotted any today. But I have on previous occasions seen both the Stimson's python and the Centralian carpet python. And they're both amazing, beautiful snakes with fantastic coloration. So often, if you're out looking for these particular snakes, you I, I usually see the Stimson's pythons just alone on the sand, just quietly sitting there looking around for any prey that it could come across such as these frogs and the main place that I tend to see the Centralian carpet pythons is up in trees or up in the rocky crevices where they're warming themselves on the, the rocks as um, the evening comes and obviously they're both looking for prey at night time as well. So Tim I think we've had a great night frog spotting out at Simpsons Gap tonight. We have seen three of our four species of frogs that we're likely to see. So just going over them again, we had our Centralian tree frog, our desert tree frog, and our Spencer's burrowing frog. And we had a little chat about the mains frog. And we also got to see some pretty cool extras today, such as the gecko, the water scorpion, and a little snake as well. Yeah, we've had a good night. So folks, just take care as you come into the park at night. Um, a really good idea is to definitely bring a couple of spare batteries for your head torch so you can make it out with plenty of light. Also just be aware that the park does close at 8pm, so make sure you allow plenty of time for that. But we hope you've enjoyed the night, and certainly if you have any other questions, Beck, I believe you can speak to someone. Yeah, definitely. If you need any tips or any ideas about coming out to Simpsons Gap and looking for frogs, you can contact the Community Engagement Officer on 8951 8247. Thanks. Thanks, guys. See ya.